Yeah, so welcome. We are wrapping up this week with author Matt Scaletti. We are uh, going to be talking about his book and his journey. Um, I'm Corey Walmsley. I'm the CEO of Aurora Corealis Publishing Company, and uh, Matt was one of my first clients. So I'm going to let him introduce himself, talk a little bit about what he does, his book, and then we're going to jump into the interview. So go ahead, Matt. Thanks for having me, Corey. This is exciting. I still cannot get used to being called an author. I guess I just need that to, I, I got to let that sink in because it's been, <laughs> what, two two years probably now and it still feels odd to say that. But yeah, the, the book, the first 15, I got a little copy of it in front of me. It's still amazing and surreal to, I, I reread some chapters here and there and it just still feels amazing. But I am Matt Scaletti. I'm a motivational speaker. My quick story is I battled alcoholism for a decade from about age 18, 19 to age 27. And a lot of people around me in my close circle say I have an extreme personality. So I went from crazy party person to crazy fitness, healthy living person. And this book talks about my journey from really from the lowest of the lows to the highest of the highs and everything in between. And I think my goal was to help people with, if they're in a tough situation, get out of that, especially if it's alcohol, if it's um, being overweight, whatever you're struggling with, this is, this is hopefully the book to help you get through it. And I've had a lot of positive feedback. The first 15 stands for the first 15 minutes of your morning. And I'm a huge morning routine guy. I think if you can own the first 15 minutes, you can own the next hour, six hours, 12 hours, weeks, months, years, and put it all together. So that's a little bit of the backdrop. Yeah. So I, I love the story. I love how the book came out and um, just to fill people in a little bit on how this worked. Um, when we sat down and started talking about this book, we decided to break it into two sections. So you got a lot of math story up front. And then you also got this second section where he talks about how you can do your own first 15 minutes. That way you can take his story and apply it to your own life. So that's the kind of books we put out here. And I love that, you know, working with Matt was kind of what got me started on like, hey, you know, this is really how we need to be working with our stories. So thank you for that inspiration. Um, and for everybody who's watching, I wanted to say that if you have questions or comments, please put them in the comments because I'm giving away some fabulous author prizes and you don't want to miss out on that. And <laughs> there's only one week left before I do that. Um, everybody who asks questions or comments does get something. And then everybody gets their name in the hat for the big prize at the end of our celebration period. So make sure you ask questions. This is your chance to pick Matt's brain. And I know he's been doing this for several years. So he's got a lot of experience and he's able to give you a lot of feedback on this. Um, so I want to dive in. I, we don't usually dive straight in, but I know you've had so many doors open because of this book. Um, so I want to dive straight into that. And uh, we chatted, I think it was like right before COVID that we got together for coffee and did an interview. Um, and I keep referencing this story because it's so good. And I'm going to let you tell the full thing, but it starts out with you sending some books to a school to help out the kids there. So Go ahead and tell us the story and everything that's come from that. <laughs> yeah, this is this is definitely one of my favorite stories to tell. I tell it in speeches. So yeah, this is probably a, two years ago. I was just looking around on Instagram and I was just trying to find sc mainly schools because I do speak in a lot of high schools and colleges. And I just thought, where can I help out? Is there a nonprofit space I can help? And I found, and, and this was just kind of dumb luck, but on Instagram, I found a nonprofit in Tennessee that helps talk to students about getting off of or never starting drugs and alcohol. And I thought, this, this is a great opportunity. In my head, I thought, I'm just going to connect with them. A lot of times people will not respond. I got a response from their, their he's their CEO, his name's Nate. And we started going back and forth. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to send them five books. I think it was five just because it seemed like it may give them like a little boost and maybe help out one person, one of their students. So he, he obviously said that would be great. I sent them down. I think he was shocked that I actually sent them. 
and not, I didn't charge him anything. I sent him for free. And he, he reached back out and said his students started reading it. They're getting a lot of great feedback from it. And then I didn't hear much from him. And about two months later, he calls me and he said, he left me a voicemail. He said, Matt, I have, I have something I need to talk to you about. And he said he wanted to, him and his nonprofit combined with the schools, there was five schools. They wanted to fly me down to Tennessee to speak to five different schools in one day, which is like a dream come true for me. He thought I was crazy, but I'm like, let's just knock them out. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I think that's how we did it. And then we just jumped from school to school. But since then, so this guy, Nate, has become a very good friend of mine. And I, you don't know this yet, Corey, but my first big gig since COVID is going to be to go down to Tennessee. We, we just are hammering out details a week ago um, to go down for four days. And I think I'm going to talk to 15 to 20 schools. It's the biggest, it's the biggest opportunity I've had since I started speaking. And I'm like glowing. I got goosebumps. And it all came from... I, I often say that if you give with zero expectation of receiving, something good is eventually going to happen. I, I expected nothing. I definitely didn't expect this. And I got a great friend out of it. And I got just an awesome group of schools that want to bring me back down. So this, this guy, Nate, has said that his students are still quoting some of the things I gave to them. This is two years ago now when I went down and it just it's just amazing how life works. And I think um, that's a little bit of luck, but I think I'm trying to give myself the opportunity by doing something selfless that's turning out to be a great business opportunity, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. That's phenomenal. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually talking about your story about this the other day with somebody and we were talking about how it's just that planting seeds. Thing. So, you know, you're giving without any expectation, you're just planting seeds, you're giving people ideas, and you never know where that's going to go. And your book makes a lot of stuff possible. Um, so tell so me, what, what else? What else is there going on? Because we haven't caught up well, in a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that that's definitely the most exciting one. I will yeah. say this just not to paint it like it's all sunshine and rainbows. I've definitely sent plenty of books to people, followed up and nothing has come of it. And I understand that. And I'm just hopeful that maybe one of the books helped one of those people out, even if I don't hear back. But I think always following up after you send them, if that's your business plan is a great idea. But yeah, if you don't expect anything, you can never be disappointed. It's just like a win-win. Um, another thing that's happening, and this is mainly because of the book. Uh, and, and I think you told me this to begin with, that the book is your best business card. And I think that's how I've been trying to use it is just, I mean, who's going to say no to a free book? I mean, most people are going to say yes. And if they actually read it and get something out of it, A, it's a win-win for everybody, but B, it may lead to something more. So this this book, and it's, I'm just smiling because I still can't believe this is happening, <laughs> is, is now on the curriculum for a a couple of classes at Tufts University up in Boston. And th this came about in a similar way. I was at a Tony Robbins event. This is just before, no, 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 this is before COVID. This is probably two years ago. Tony Robbins event, I bring three books in every trip that I go on because mm -hmm. I figure I'm gonna meet a lot of people. And I just, I say, hey, it's great meeting you. If you're a reader, here you go. If not, if you know somebody who's maybe struggling, give them this book and maybe it can help them out. And so I did that with three people at the Tony Robbins event, this woman, which I did not know at the time, was high up there at Tufts University. She reached out to me after the event, after she read the book and said, Matt, we need to get your book as part of our syllabus. And actually I lied, this is three years ago because since this happened, I've gone to Boston three different times. During COVID, I did a virtual speech um, because I couldn't travel anywhere. But it's just, it's just incredible what these, I mean, and I give you a ton of the credit. I mean, if I didn't, if I did not have a book, I don't think a huge amount of these opportunities that I've had would have happened. So that's another very cool thing, which is now ongoing. It's every year I work with this, these students and there's about 75 students. I talk to three different classrooms in a group of 25. And it's just, it's like living my dream. It's just the, it's yeah. just the coolest thing. And I think this book is a big reason why. And I don't want to forget to say for anybody that's never written a book, I, I laugh when Corey says author, because 
I often tell people I wrote when I wrote this book, I had written about as many books as I had read in my life. And now since then, I'm a huge reader. I just I love it. But the point is that she makes it so simple. And I, I still can't believe it actually happened. And we still need to talk about a second book. But if anybody thinks it's it's overwhelming or it's too much, Corey helps you break it down and simplify it. And I just think it's why not? I mean, I think everybody has a story. And I think that was one of the big things Corey helped me with, which is you need to get your story out there. And whoever's watching this, you need to get your story out there too, because if it changes, helps one person's life, that's a huge, huge deal in this world. Yeah, absolutely. You got to get your story out there and start making that bigger impact. Um, and I'm so glad you have, because it has just grown and grown and grown for you. So that's fantastic. Um, we did have one comment. So I wanted to say, um, I just was going to read it to you. Um, Alex said, super inspiring, Matt. I love your energy. Selfless business opportunity is awesome. So yeah. Oh, I like yeah. that. Selfless business opportunities. I might need to use that little tagline. I like that. Yeah, that's a good phrase there. <laughs> that's a very good phrase. Alex, I appreciate that. I'm writing that down. That's really good. <laughs> Selfless right. business opportunities. Yeah. If you are watching, if you are watching the replay, make sure you ask questions and uh, comment because you do get your name in for some fabulous author prizes and you can pick Matt's brain. Um, you can pick my brain too, but my brain's more available than all my authors. So <laughs> this is your chance. Um, yeah. So uh, I know we're getting close on time here. So, um, you know, was there any other uh, great story that you wanted to share about this? Because I know you probably have a thousand of them. Um, I, I'm trying to think of another. I mean, those two are, are big time standouts. I, I just think, well, here, I'll give you another one. And I learned, this is right, I think right after the book came out. And, and I, I credit my wife for this, but I was in a couple of scenarios where I would, we would be traveling or I would be somewhere and just talking to somebody and they'd ask me questions about myself. And I did not have the book on me. And I think that was a big mistake because I couldn't, I would have physically given them a copy. So uh, since then, anywhere we travel and anywhere I go, I typically have a few of them in the car. Mm -hmm. And it's just, um, I, I was told in the beginning that it's something like you're not gonna get rich on book sales. And, and that may be true, it may not be true, I don't know. But if you can get it in front of the right people and make the right contacts and just keep pushing, so I think what I'm learning and what I have learned is if you reach out to 10 people and maybe you send 10 people a free book and you follow up and then you hear nothing, that doesn't mean the 11th person's not going to say yes. So I think not giving up and just believing in your book, believing in the process and just continuously being selfless, uh, that's what's worked for me. I understand from a business perspective that you probably need to have set aside some money because you are, you know, dishing out a, a book that costs whatever the amount is, and you may not get anything back for one, two, three, six months. But I think being persistent and, um, and having a game plan in place has been a huge deal and always having a book on you or three books on you, whether it's in the car, in your work bag, whatever, because you, you just don't know who you're going to be in front of, especially hopefully with COVID starting to slow down and you're getting out in public more, you get in front of the right person, you hand them that business card, you just, you never know where it's going to lead. So it, it's been, it's been an exciting thing for me and I'm going to keep pushing. That's awesome. I, I love the relationship building that books allows for. So fantastic. Um, I want to go ahead and wrap this up here. Um, so I know it was a while ago that you wrote this, but if you were talking to somebody who was like, oh, I love your story. And I feel like I have a story too. I've been thinking about a book. Um, what would you tell them to do? I would tell them, well, I would tell them one thing, which I, I've seen this just because since I wrote this, I, I've been talking to a lot of people about it. I would say, start, like just start, because when you have that feeling of, I have this story that needs to get out there, strike now, reach out to Corey, start setting up a summary and outline, because if you wait, then it start, you start to come down off that high. And I've seen that happen and it kills me. Like it eats me up to see that. 
Um, I would say I have a podcast that the, the name of it is called Just Start, one of the episodes. And I think that's the hardest part. And once you reach out to Corey, once you start writing the outline and it becomes real that this could actually happen, I, I really think that's the biggest thing. And when you have that urge and think, maybe I could write a book, act on it, just boom, take the action, whether it's sending an email out, starting, write one line, write one line of an outline, just begin because it's not, it's not going to become a reality if you don't start. So I think that starting is, is the toughest. Once people get the ball rolling, then there's this thing called momentum that is a powerful beast that I think can just build on, on top of itself. And then you have Corey to hold you accountable. She's not going to let you fail. Like you're going to get the book out there and she's going to make sure of it. So I would say just start while the ideas are floating around in your head and while you're excited about it. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, aside from the part that people should reach out to me, <laughs> um, absolutely get started, get that stuff down on paper. Because if you don't have something to work with, you know, what are you going to do? Nobody's going to benefit from the ideas just floating around spinning in your head, right? So yeah, and actually, some I can't remember if you told me this, and I'll, I'll close with this, or somebody else did. But they told me when I was wondering, I think you might have told me this, when I was debating on writing the book or not, I was told, and this really flipped a switch in my head, I was told that I am selfish if I do not write it because the story can help somebody. And if I don't write it, it's not going to help somebody. So if you're somebody that, if you're selfless and somebody tells you that you're selfish for not writing it, that triggered me to go, okay, like this has to get out there. So whatever your story is, I just think everybody has such a fascinating story and you put it down on paper, it's going to inspire somebody. Awesome. Yeah. And that'll definitely light a fire under most people. So I, I know you're busy. Um, so I want to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, for sharing all your fabulous stories. Um, we'll absolutely have to connect again and keep building and building and building on this because it's just so fascinating hearing everywhere that you get to go with this book. Um, again, if you're watching on replay, make sure you drop your comments. We will respond. And, you know, Thank you for joining us if you've been watching and everybody have a wonderful day and a fantastic weekend. Thanks, Corey. Thanks for having me.